solving the DC analysis, this time with an emitter stabilized circuit. In the emitter stabilized bias circuit, there's an extra resistor down here on the emitter, and that helps to stabilize the bias point if you have transistors with different betas. Uh, the process for solving the, the Q point in this circuit is exactly the same as the other one. First thing you do is you redraw the base drive circuit. So here we have one 18 volt source. And what I've done is I've split that off into two separate 18 volt sources and then redrawn it here as this 18 volts generating base current through the 390k ohm resistor going into the base. Then you solve for IB using KVL. So I've drawn a KVL loop here, and I've worked out my equation. We've done this a couple of times with uh, algebra. Uh, essentially, IB is a voltage over a resistance. What is the voltage? Well, there's 18 volts here, and we lose 0.7 there. So 17.3 volts is dropped between these two resistors. You can see that over here. This resistor we use directly as a 390k ohm resistor. But this one, we have to figure out the reflected impedance as it's looked at looking into the base. So we have to multiply it by 201 in order to get the proper value. So what we're doing is we're moving this resistor over to the base side and then adding them together and then dividing that under the 17.3. So the voltage over the resistance gives you about 40 microamps of base current. Then we need to solve for IC and IE, and that's done just by multiplying my beta. So IC is beta times IB, which is 200 times 40 microamps, or about 7.97 milliamps. The emitter current is a little larger because it includes one extra base current. Uh, so it's beta plus one times IB, which is 201 times 40 microamps, or 8.01 milliamps. If you look at these numbers, you can see that this is 0.04 milliamps plus 7.97. So add a four to that, and you got 8.01 milliamps. This plus this gives you the emitter current. Now that we've solved for the currents, we can solve for the voltages across the resistor and the transistor. We know what these currents are, and we know what IC is and IE is, and we know what the resistor values are, so we can get those voltages. VRC, the voltage across this resistor, is just ICRC, 7.97 times 1,000, so 7.97 volts. This resistor here has a little bit more current through it. It's IE times RE, so 8 milliamps times 220. That resistor has 1.762 volts across it. VCE, this is the voltage across the transistor between these two terminals, well, that's just going to be 18 volts minus the voltage here minus the voltage there. So it's VCC minus VRC minus VRE, 18 minus 8 minus 1.76. You got about 8.27 volts across it. The next step is to start drawing the graph. And for that, we find the saturation current. We think of the transistor as a short, and we figure out how much current goes through it. So it's going to be 18 volts over the sum of these two resistors. So IC sat is going to be 18 over 1220, 14.7 milliamps. VCE cutoff, that's the voltage across the transistor when it's off or when it's open. If I pull this transistor out of here and I measure the voltage between these two points, this is going to go to ground, that's going to go to 18, so that's going to be 18 volts. Then what's left is to draw your load line from IC sat to VCE off and plot your Q point on the load line.